How you doing everyone? This is Zach Allen. So excited here to be at Cleveland Srixon headquarters today. I get to get fit for new equipment. So it's been a while. I'm really looking forward to seeing what, uh, what they can do to help me hit the ball a little bit better, a little straighter, a little farther. And I'm excited for you to be able to go ahead and watch this whole experience. I um, also just want to mention we had a lot of people on our email list write in and give us different questions about this whole fitting process. So if you would like to be a part of that email list and go ahead and give me questions and different things that I can kind of put up on my video that I can hopefully answer for you, go ahead and just click the link below and you could go ahead and be a part of that email list. But other than that, let's go inside and see what they've got in store for us. Ruben Padilla. Nice to see you again, Ruben. Hey. How are you doing? Good, good. How's everything? Oh, very good, man. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I'm going to get fit today. You know, um, any, anything that I can expect here with this fitting session? Um, you know, we're going to try you with something you currently are playing now, uh, mm -hmm. which is a Dynamic Gold S300. Exactly. We're going to try to get you may maybe into something a little lighter today, uh, only because of the fact that a lot of players are going to a lighter shaft, easier to swing, easy loading shafts. We'll try uh, two or three different types of shafts for you today, see if you like it, and see what the numbers look like. That's, that sounds perfect. That sounds perfect. We all know I need a little help in my, my longer clubs, maybe my four iron, my three iron, and you know, possibly a, possibly a hybrid or utility iron and, and things up, up, you know, as they get a little more challenging to keep the ball in the air for a longer time. Correct. And this is what it's all about. A good fitting is going to be taking you from through the bag, pitching and wedge, through your longest iron and gapping you properly. Uh, we want to see that 10 to 12 yard increments in flight. We're also looking at spin, uh, descent, launch angle, everything to make you play better golf. Sounds great. Good. Sounds great. You want to okay. get started? That sounds perfect, man. Um, what type of uh, technology are you using here today? Uh, right now we have the uh, foresight. It's the uh, Game Changer 2. Okay. Uh, that's going to give us a lot of numbers. You'll see all across the board. We'll go over certain categories for you and see how those numbers change. Um, and all are going to reflect on shaft load, release, um, ball speed, uh, trajectory. You'll see all those numbers there, and we'll find out what the best numbers are for you. Sounds perfect, man. You're the man for the job. Thank you very much. Right. You ready to go? Yep. Perfect. Start you off with an S300 here. Uh, it's a six, uh, the seven uh, sixty-five head, and we're going to see where it goes. Give me about five or six shots, and we'll go over uh, the numbers with you a little bit and see how we can increase or decrease numbers depending on what you like to see. Your uh, Zach, your uh, current ball flight, little draw, little fade, is it pretty straight? Uh, probably a little draw to okay. straight. Straight. Yep. Let's see one more. All right, that's perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at. Uh, go ahead and look at the screen up there. I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to walk around. We're going to go over some numbers with you. Okay. Okay. What would that, um, you know, having that little plateau to the ball flight, would that give me a little extra distance, or what? What does that accomplish? Uh, just spin. If we're having too much or too little, certain things will happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start off here to see how well the shaft is loading. So we can come in a little closer if you want. There. Great. And this is just basically, you know, your four shots. You're pretty warm right now. Uh, fluctuation, 119, 21, 23, 20. It's pretty consistent. Tells me loading and releasing pretty well. You're striking it, you know, obviously a little bit more towards center. Those numbers aren't fluctuating too, too much. So yeah. that's good. As you look down here, you look even look at line angle. Uh, your... Uh, your uh, side spin here is the club head's coming into the, into the golf ball. Uh, any number that exceeds under 500 is good in that category. And that looks actually like a pretty good line angle for you. And that's our standard at 61.5 right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is your back spin number here. It's at 4,900. Easy way to kind of determine uh, where you should be. And a lot of people ask about spin a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things is six iron, we can more or less just go 6,000. Okay. Seven iron, 7,000, eight iron, 8,000. Oh, so yeah. it's an easy kind of math to, to get to a little bit close. Uh, you're at about 5,000. So it's not too little spin. If you were again at 3,500, we need to get some spin up. We need to get your launch up. Yeah. But right now that doesn't look too bad. I'm just on the low side. Right, just a little bit there. And um, you know, 46 degrees on descent angle. Again, we're looking for about 45 on average with your numbers. Mm -hmm. That's gonna tell me we have a little bit of stopping power. So this number is great, 18. We're a little bit low on spin, that's okay. Um, good descent angle here, 177. Really don't have to worry about that golf ball really running out too much for you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go to the extreme opposite and we're gonna probably see some things happen. Maybe a higher launch for you, a lot higher on spin and maybe even the descent. 
Not to say that that's going to be the best shaft for you, but what I want to do is I want to be able to show the viewers a little bit different what shafts can do, okay? Sounds perfect. All right, so I'm going to put you in an Nanus Pro. And we're going to go to a 950. It's close to about 98 grams. Okay. And we're going to see what we get out of that. And it should good. launch higher. It should definitely spin more for you, but it's a lot lighter than this as well. Gotcha. Okay? And, and that S3 was a... Uh... How much is the S3 in weight? Uh, this is about 130 grams okay. versus the one. So we're going to really drop, and we're only doing this for purposes of fitting. Mm -hmm. I would never get you into something that light. We're just going to see the numbers change. Yeah. You'll swing it a lot easier, and not only that, but you'll see uh, the numbers go up dramatically. Then after that, we'll put you in something that I think you're going to fit better into. Okay. I'm going to try you with the KVS Tour C Taper. Okay. The one we talked about, about 120 grams. Yeah, about a 10 lighter. grams lighter. Mm -hmm. A little bit easier to load. This is just going to be for uh, show the uh, fitting numbers. Same head, just different shaft. One more. Side by side comparison, you'll be able to see a little bit difference there. So we did get a little higher ball flight, like we talked about. I thought it was going to be a lot higher mm -hmm. uh, with this one here. You seem to be swinging it easy. It's, it's pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, let's compare a little bit of numbers here. Uh, ball speed went up about three miles an hour, and that's because there's no tricks about it. It's just lighter. Lighter is going to give you that advantage. And that's kind of what we're here today to kind of talk about fitting. What what can it do? What's the benefits of fitting? And we talked about that earlier. Um, some people will come in and they'll just play whatever they have off the shelf. It's a generalization of a shaft that works for a lot of people, but not, you know, a better player or someone who maybe has a different type of swing. Uh, in this case here, you can see by with you swinging the same way, you've gained three miles an hour. What does that mean? Well, in fitting terms, every mile per hour is going to be about two to two and a half yards per mile per hour. Mm -hmm. So that could be a total of six to eight yards longer sometimes. Um, you may like the extra distance and actually swing it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, the launch angle, it pretty much stayed the same, 18.3 to 18.3. Uh, we had a little bit more spin. I was really, I thought I would see that number get, that last one we had was 53.99. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to get up to more like 5,800 for you with the shaft. Mm -hmm. It's the exact opposite of what you're, what you're playing now, which is the dynamic goal, just a high kick, which is going to keep your ball flight flatter keep your spin a little bit more controlled and you being a better player. Uh, on this end here, I thought I'd for sure see another, you know, five to 800 on spin. You can see there, it, it has a little bit more spin. The last shot there was at 5,400. Uh, your descent angle changed one degree at 47 and you picked up three extra yards. Okay. So that's not horrible. Uh, it's probably a little too light for you, you know, using the 130 to, to 100 gram shaft. I'm gonna try one more for you and we'll go from there, okay? okay. All right. KBS got a lot of different shafts nowadays too. Yeah, they sure do. They're all different kick points. Uh, that's what it is now. And you'll see, you know, the stuff that I see on a daily basis a lot is uh, how the shaft loads for somebody mm -hmm. and, and, and releases. And I mean, you can get up to four or five miles per hour difference. Wow. Uh, easier to swing. You can see the guy that's struggling, trying to, trying to get something that's a little heavier, a little more boardy or feeling, you know, is when he picks it up, he feels like he has to try to make a move to get to it yeah. instead of just swinging through it. So that's 10 grams lighter than yours. Kick point a little bit different. And uh, we'll see what we have. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was pretty thin. Okay, take that out. Try it again. I think you asked a question earlier about when should you come in for a fitting or who should come in for a fitting? Yeah. You know, that's a great, it's, it's something that you really have to, it, you're a teacher, you have students. Uh, we want to make sure that they can produce a consistent golf swing before they come in to get fit properly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it's going to take, as you see here. I'm taking out the bad shots. Uh, we want to base it off a good swing, not swings that are, you know, pulling left and going right. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to say 
you can be up to a 25 handicap and still come in and get a proper fit. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about, you know, shafts for them as well. And, you know, they're, since they're a, a higher handicap player, what they're going to actually need, something forgiving, something lighter, uh, low kick point to get the ball in the air. They're usually lacking a lot of spin because they don't compress the ball as much as a better player does. So we're always looking for launch, spin, great descent angle, something easy for them to hit. So, so Ruben, one of our readers asked about just, just having a bad day at their fitting session. Just like you have a bad day on the golf course, mm -hmm. they just could not hit the ball at all during their fitting session. What, what, what would you do there? Uh, it, it's happened. You know, they come in, and that's one thing. It's, it's, you know, the way golf is. It's that game where you're playing real well one day and not maybe so well the next day. Uh, we just really try to get the best numbers we possibly can. Uh, in those areas that we talked about earlier about um, how the club's coming into the golf ball, we can really read a lot off these numbers. Uh, to give a really good fit, you know, the important number obviously is the, is the ball speed number. That's really important because then we can tell right away, are you a X flex or, or a flex? Are you an S, you an R, are you a, you know, a senior flex, mm -hmm. an A flex? Uh, those are very important. As long as we get some of those swings in, then we can do a pretty decent job on fitting. Yeah, yeah. See one more? Mm -hmm, not bad, huh? Okay, so we, we did three different shafts. We did the S3 Dynamic Gold. We did the NS Pro 950, 100 grams, 130, and we went to 120. So we kind of bounced around a little bit, just to kind of have you feel different weights, feel how the club loaded and released with it with a different you know weight, different kick points in the shafts. Let's just see how would happen here. So we had 121.9. We jumped up with this, and it's not you know it's no trick. It's a lighter shaft. You should gain ball speed, and that's what it showed me here. Uh, this one here at 120, you almost had the same amount of ball speed. So. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, easier to load for you. We talked about that earlier. Uh, when that happens, it's it's you're swinging smoother. You just produce more ball speed. And that's just being a teacher. You know that. Yeah. You know. So there we go. Here, let's look at the launch angles: 18, 3, 18, 3, and 18. So that really didn't change very much, even though that we did have, you know, different kick points in there. You seem to level out the ball, and that's your ball fly. That's kind of your swing. So nothing went really high. Um, with the spin, they all pretty much, you had a little bit more spin here because of the lighter shaft. Uh, as far as uh, descent angle, we looked at that, 46, 47, 47. This one here, you seem to gain a little bit of distance, just a little bit overall. Uh, trajectory, I mean, uh, offline, 5, 8, 0, and 2. You can see here, this was probably more sporadic than any. The lightness of it made yeah. you pull it a little bit more left. You had a little bit, you know, uh, but besides that, like a 12, 0, 4, and 0. So. Yeah. I mean, that's actually a, a pretty good fit right there. Yeah, so that's nice. I mean, gain, gaining four yards of carry on average. Yeah, so this is probably my shaft, huh? I like that for you. I do. It's something a little lighter. You're not going to work as hard. I don't know how much you get to play, but I hear a lot of comment from a lot of the local club pros and stuff. I don't get to play as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. You know, when I go out there, I don't want something really heavy or loggy in my hand. It may feel good in here, but when you go out and start finishing your round, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, you're wow, hitting these long irons and they're just yeah. feeling heavy to you. That's a little bit easier for you to hit. Yeah. I would yeah, suggest I think, that. I think you're exactly right. Perfect. That was great. Let's hit some drivers. Okay. All right. Yeah, good stability too. That's right. All right, so let's just look at these three here. First of all, I'll show you the side view of that right there. So. You can see from there those green lines there, really flattened out. So what this tells me, this tells me that you have the great, you have a really good launch angle, and also telling you the ball's spinning the way we want it. So we want to see that level. We want to almost cut your driver flight in in uh, three parts, which is one is is your launch, two would be again your your parallel. You know that tells me that if if the ball was spinning too much in here, you would see the ball rising. Mm -hmm. If it's spinning a lot less or we need spin, it would be dropping down. It's like a knuckleball effect. So uh, we'll talk about spin just real quick to give the viewers and everybody an idea. Well, what is the proper amount of spin? They hear this, they need to have low spin. Well, it, it's a lot of the talk of the tour. They have the ball speed to keep the numbers down and to keep the spin down. They have enough ball speed to keep the ball in the air. If you get an older gentleman coming in here that's, 
you know, 70 years old and his ball speed is, you know, geez, you know, if we're talking tour quality is 165 on up. Mm -hmm. And if he comes in at 130 and his spin is at 2000, that's too less of spin for him. Mm -hmm. So he'll hit his ball and he'll fall out of the sky because it doesn't have enough backspin. The correct amount of backspin is gonna keep your ball leveled out a little bit longer and that's gonna keep it in the air. You have too much, it'll rise. You have too little, it falls. Mm -hmm. So what I'm seeing in your swing right here with this, uh, it looks really, really good. It's staying level a long time. And you're descending, you'll notice it's, that it's definitely a lot less of, dispense, of descent as well. That's for you to get the roll. So right now, if we just looked overall, you're pretty consistent at 155 ball speed there. Your spin right now is at uh, averaging out at 22.75. You know, where should it be for you at the ball speed? At 24, 2500 would be great. Uh, right now you can see your descent is at 39 degrees and your average carry is at uh, 270. So, you know, 269, 272, 270 on the last three swings. I mean, that is pretty solid. And it's really maintaining a good ball flight, so you wouldn't have to worry about it either way in the wind or yeah. even down on out. It's really, really good. So yeah, but that's a, that's a great fit for you, right? So those numbers are right on. Yeah, they seem like they seem like they're coming out pretty good. Um, no, that's very good, man. It's, and it's a great looking club too. So we can't beat the performance. I mean, me getting 270 with my old driver, I struggled to carry it 260 on my best hits, mm -hmm. and it was definitely spinning in the low 3000s. So it was oh, only boy. rolling maybe eight or nine yards, mm -hmm. you know. Added some weight to it, you know, weight is gonna bring down your spin number, you know, lighter is gonna bring it up, so okay. so that's probably maybe your, your your shaft is a little bit lighter than that one as well. Yeah, it definitely mm -hmm. is, definitely yeah. is. So that's what, it, the weight of it just probably brought some of that spin down too, but that mm -hmm. is, uh, those are great numbers. Those, that ball flight right there is ideal for you. Yeah, yeah, it, it feels really good. I think too, just having that little bit lower spin to me, it feels like I can hit the ball a little more online too. Correct. You know, once it starts spinning and gets up a little higher, I don't feel like I can keep it in the fairway as easily. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, just um, a quick question about mm -hmm. driver shaft, right? The shaft length. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you see? What are your thoughts on shaft length? There's a lot of viewers out there that have questions on, you know, what's the standard today and what should they be playing? Yeah, um, every, well, the way we build a driver, is um, our Cleveland line a little lighter, so it's a little bit longer. It, it is a, uh, a lighter weight shaft. It has to be longer to even out the swing weight of the golf club. Uh, with this one here, it's a little bit heavier, so it can be shorter. So every manufacturer, even us, uh, will make different lengths of shafts. Which was the best for you? I would say come in to get a fitting to find out yeah. because that way you can try more options and you can have the heavier shaft being shorter the lighter would be longer. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great question. It's hard to really get the right answer until you come in and feel what you like. And not only that, but how the club reacts to you. Yeah, no, I, I can see it. You know, there's long hitters, there's short hitters, there's people with quicker tempos, slower tempos, and you're gonna need to find, you know, somebody to help you to find what's the, sure. what's the optimal shaft for my swing. Correct, uh, they ask about long drive. They're, the drivers are so long, they hit it so far. Yeah. That's a lot of timing. <laughs> to get to that point as well. Yeah, my students bring up Brooke Henderson. You know, she's got mm -hmm. that 48-inch driver, and you know she's, but you know obviously she's an elite athlete who's practiced Correct. a ton with that thing. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I would say come in to get a fitting. That's the best way to find out uh, where you are as far as length goes. Okay. All, All right. Very good. All right. So you know I do. I, I want to do something different with my three iron and my three hybrid. Now you're looking at a, a utility iron instead of a, a hybrid, is that correct? Or would you want to yeah. try both? No, you know, I just want to try to find something to help kind of fill in that little weak area in my three, four iron. Okay. You know, because um, right now I'm just playing, you know, just like I said, just, just off the rack standard three and four iron with S300s. And it's hard to get that distance gapping to continue to increase like it should. Like I look at some PJ Tour numbers mm -hmm. and some of these guys get longer as they get up to the top of their clubs, you know? Correct. That that's a 70 gram shaft, mid 70s. It's probably going to be about 76 grams total when it's when it's all said and done. Um, utilities become very popular, replacing longer irons, easier to hit, a little wider bottom here, as you can see. Um, some people don't like the looks of hybrids, yeah. so they want the old traditional look. This is why these are made. Yeah. Um, your number you're looking for is about two to two ten. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get the proper numbers on launch and also on spin number. We want this to go up, and we want it to actually stop around that number for you. Okay. You don't want it coming in too flat. If you do, it's never gonna stop. Again, we're looking for that spin number to come up as well, okay? okay Let's perfect. give it a try, Let's see what happens. That's a 
beauty there. Let's see. Oh, look at that, yeah. So you carried that 218. Great spin, 3,500 on it. That's perfect right there, like that. So this would probably be the, the loft that you would suggest. Would this replace the three iron or the, the three hybrid? That's a great question because again, now what you're going into now is, is length. Because that shaft there, the overall club is longer. It's a little bit lighter. You will hit that further than a three iron. Yeah. So that's more of going to be like a two, two replacement for you. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that would be fine, even though it says three on the bottom. Correct. That's why it's so important to go in and get fit because it's not necessarily about what the club says. It's about how it works for you and if it fits yeah. your gaps, right? Yeah. People come in a lot and they'll ask, uh, oh, what's the best long iron for me? What should I do? Should I split a, a set? Should I do a combo set? Uh, for most people, I would say suggestions, yes, go 5.65 five, and your longer irons. And then if you like that look of the 7.65, then go from 7 iron on down. And this is, again, forgiving, giving it a little bit of cavity, getting the ball up in the air, letting it spin a little bit more. A lot of people have a hard time getting those, those irons up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ball speed loading great, 137, 36, 35, uh, 37 and 36, uh, 14, 6, never really changed. The, the ball flight came up, it stayed really solid, really level, which is great for you. Uh, 3,800 on spin, fantastic member there. Uh, average carry 214. So I'd say that would definitely be your club there. So I'm pretty excited here. You know, you've got, I've got a new uh, KBS C-Taper in my irons. Right. It's a little lighter than what I was playing. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to find uh, some utility irons to help me with my long irons to help fill those gaps and help get my carry yardages mm -hmm. up to where, you know, I feel they should be. And then that driver was, that driver was phenomenal. I mean, I thought it was just much longer <laughs> and straighter than what I had been playing. So, yeah. um, but speak a little bit to just, you know, I mean, who should come in and get fit? What type of player profile are you looking at that should really you know, benefit from, from getting a proper fitting? Sure, and it, it's all, all, all categories of players. It really is, from your beginning player to your junior player, mm -hmm. um, especially the kids. So they're, they're constantly growing. Uh, when they do, you know, length of shaft, weight of club, makes a big, big difference. Uh, your um, handicap players from 25 and, and in, um, what happens is when they first come in at a high handicap player, we're going to put them in something easy to hit, light, light swing weights, uh, lighter shafts, more forgiving golf club. These players tend to get into, uh, to be a better player, they're going to need something maybe a little bit better profile for them. Maybe something that's not as forgiving, maybe something with a little bit more weight. As they start getting to be a better player, they're going to build, as you know, they're going to build ball speed. We may have started them off in a regular flex. All of a sudden, within six months, now they're swinging a lot faster because they have better technique. Mm -hmm. They're going to need a stiff flex. Um, size of hand makes a difference. We don't have the same size hand. Yeah. L length of arm. I mean, me and you are completely two different fits. Yeah. Um, and it's just with everybody. It's with everybody along those same lines. Uh, everybody is not the same height, not the same length, hand size, um, ability of player. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the things we're looking for, and we're looking to make sure that everybody really plays better golf by getting fit. No, I think you're exactly right. You know, um, I know a lot of my students, you know, um, they'll go through swing changes, and we'll see big changes in their lie angle at impact. Sure. So not only should you just, A, go in and get that checked, but, you know, if you've gone through a major swing change and, you know, you've seen more distance or a different ball flight, um, it's probably a good time to go have your clubs checked out and uh, probably your driver also. Mm -hmm. um, even with some of my juniors that I teach, just uh, some of them that are improperly fit with equipment that's too heavy, and you see just the, the injuries that happen because they're, they've got ill-fitting equipment, you know? Correct. And they're swinging very hard with something that's a little too heavy, so just to get the proper weight of shaft and, Correct. You know, and, and those types of things. The most common that I see on a daily basis is um, weight of shaft, mm -hmm. a little heavy, too stiff, and the line angle adjustment from irons, yeah, which yeah. will make a big, big difference. Uh, people can come in and they'll be playing something standard. They may need something too upright or too flat, depending on the player. Um, from then, as you know, as a teacher, when you, have, you don't have a proper line angle on the golf club, you can hit cuts all day, you can hit hooks all day. Mm -hmm. It's not due to the swing, it's due to the club not being fit to you. No, it's, it's so true, you know, just getting that lie angle and you know, how the, how the club goes through the turf when it's, you know, toe deep, you're, you're never hitting that sweet spot consistently. Mm -hmm. You know, um, no, I think, uh, I think that's, a, that's a very important variable. But, you know, you guys have the Smith machine here and you guys can do all that stuff there pretty quickly. Bend the club, bend lying is for everything.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, you know, I think um, I think that's something for everyone out there to just really take note of. It's just fittings are so important for so many different people. Um, just because um, you, you feel like you're maybe not the best golfer in the world, it's still important to go and have your numbers checked and make sure you've got the proper equipment. A lot of people come in to take lessons, and I know it's their equipment that's holding them back. They've got shafts that are too heavy, possibly shafts that are too stiff, um, heads that are not forgiving, a lot of different things that are going to make them cast the club from the top, that's going to make them swing too hard, that's going to throw them off balance a lot of different things, but once you get fit, you're going to really find something that's going to be optimized for you. you know? So sure. I appreciate it, man. You've helped me out Thanks. a ton, and I feel like uh, I've, I've, I've moved my bag closer to what is, uh, what is the best for me. Great. Love to hear it. Thank you. Hey, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that, and I hope we're able to answer some of your questions about what to expect during a club fitting. The team at Strixon was amazing, and we ended up with tons of extra footage, so we decided to break it up into two segments. Part two will be coming out as soon as I'm done with the editing, and I'll put a link to that video right here. We took a behind-the-scenes tour of the entire factory, and we got to see how all the equipment was tested, built, and assembled. Plus, we talked to the head of marketing about the latest gear coming out from Cleveland Strixon and how all the latest technology can benefit your personal game. We'll send out an email as soon as part two is ready. So if you're not already on our mailing list, be sure to sign up by clicking the link in the description below. You'll get the latest updates and all the exclusive videos that are only available to our subscribers. I hope you're ready and I'll talk to you soon.